Yesterday was the sixth anniversary, January 6th, and of course it was a media spectacle. The media went out of their way to play up January 6th and define Republicans by it. Uh, They have denounced the Republican Party in general, and even Republicans who condemned what happened on January 6th are not immune. It is very clear that they're taking the James Carville track on this, and they're trying to define Republicans by it. I want to play you a couple of pieces of audio. The first is from uh, David Axelrod, who was on CNN. I think it's pretty clear because uh, there's uh, one party that has decided that they don't want to put a focus on what happened on January 6th. You know, you hear a lot of talk about cancel culture. Well, they, Republicans in Congress would like to cancel this particular bit of history and move on uh, because at the end of the day, they're worried that the finger uh, will point at uh, former President Trump and his role uh, in this insurrection. But it is highly irresponsible and in certain ways a self-inflicted wound because you don't have to be Nostradamus to predict uh, future problems if you have massive uh, retirements on the Capitol Police, a demoralized police force, and no uh, plan moving uh, forward because you're stymied by politics. And uh, it's really tragic. It's tragic for our democracy, and it has some tragic, uh, you know, practical implications. Tragic, practical implications. But wait, uh, that was the reasonable take. Wait until you hear Matthew Dowd. Matthew Dowd, the broken man. He's also a political analyst for ABC News. Keep in mind, this guy pretends to be an objective political analyst on ABC News and yet was on MSNBC with Joy Reid. Listen to this. What would happen if after 9-11 we had done nothing? We had done nothing. Think about that. If we had done nothing after 9-11. And to me, though there was less loss of life on January 6th, January 6th was worse than 9-11 because it's continued to rip our country apart and give permission for people to pursue autocratic means. And so I think we're at a much worse place than we've been. And as I've said, I think to you before, I think we're in the most perilous point in time since 1861 in the advent of the Civil War. Oh, good grief. If I was not on terrestrial radio, my language would be very bad right now. Let me explain to you what's going on here. The American left is still shell-shocked by the data from November. Now, I, I I am dismissive of the idea the election was stolen. We we don't need to relitigate it. Just 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 take my presupposition and run with it whether you agree or not. Donald Trump lost the election by 43,000 votes in electoral college states. He came very close to winning re-election. And while Donald Trump lost, Democrats were expecting a very very big wave. They uh, Republicans were likewise expecting a very big way for Democrats. The Republican internal polling and the Democratic internal polling all showed them that the Democrats were about to be swept into power across the nation with redistricting on the line. Republicans were toast. And what actually happened is that black and Hispanic voters not only shifted towards Donald Trump, but a lot of white voters who didn't like Donald Trump voted for Joe Biden at the top of the ticket and then down the ticket switched to the Republican Party. Split ticket voting is not a common phenomenon in this country, but it happens. And it happened in November. And it happened because the Democrats, with their friends in the media, decided that the riots that were happening after George Floyd, the burning of businesses, the looting of cities, it really wasn't a big deal. And to the extent it was a big deal, it was Donald Trump's fault. And story after story after story was run negatively and critically about Donald Trump and Republicans and conservatives. And voters themselves living in these places realize that's not the truth of it. It was not Trump voters who were burning down cities across America, including Kenosha, Wisconsin, or Portland, Oregon. In fact, it was the media telling people that they were mostly fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. It was people like Chris Cuomo on television who were telling people Antifa is actually uh, not not a bad movie. It was the FBI saying Antifa is this diffuse organization. It was the media ridiculing, harassing, and demanding the the expedient departure of federal law enforcement and homeland security operatives from Portland, Oregon, claiming that Donald Trump was making the situation worse. And the voters didn't buy it. The voters resented defunding the police, and Hispanic voters in particular really hated like hell the idea that we were going to move in a socialist direction. So while these voters did not like Donald Trump and voted for Joe Biden or just left the presidential line blank, 
That's actually what happened in Georgia, where David Perdue got more votes than Donald Trump. People just left the line blank. But down ticket, they voted Republican. They voted Republican at the state level such that Republicans were expected to lose several legislatures and actually wound up picking up legislative seats around the country. They were expected to lose several governor's mansions and actually picked up governor's mansions. They were expected to lose the United States House of Representatives big time and instead came within five seats of winning. And they only lost the Senate because a propaganda campaign by a bunch of idiots down in Georgia convinced Republicans that it was going to be stolen. So 427,205 of them did not show up for the runoff. Yes, 427,205 Republicans voted in the general November general election in Georgia and then did not show up in the runoff. 427,000. Had those people showed up and even half of them voted for Purdue and Leffler, Republicans would have kept the Senate. But you had the chairman of the state party in Georgia, various members of Congress, and the president all telling them the election was going to be stolen, so they didn't show up and vote. And the Democrats got those two seats. That's why the Democrats have the Senate. Not because the Democrats won, but because Republicans themselves suppressed their own vote. And the media knows all of this. The media realizes all of this. The media recognizes that though they did their best to cover for Antifa, they did their best to cover for the Democrats, they did their best to downplay the violence and make it all about George Floyd, the voters themselves saw with their own eyes what actually was happening and they were pissed and they voted Republican. So what are you going to do? The party out of the White House tends to do well in off-year elections. 2022 is going to be an off-year election. Along comes James Carville. And he gives an interview to Vox Media. And James Carville, in this interview with Vox Media, savages uh, the university faculty lounge language Democrats are using on transgenderism, on crime, you name the issue. They're sounding like a bunch of woke academic radicals. And James Carville said that's going to cost them votes. On top of that, he says you've got to define the Republicans by January 6th. That if you can define the Republicans by January 6th and the way Republicans define the Democrats by defund the police, then you could mitigate a Republican surge in 2022. That is exactly what the media is doing. I know and like personally James Carville, even as we disagree on politics, the media respects the hell out of James Carville. The media adores James Carville. He's always good for a one-liner and he typically knows his stuff. And by the way, James Carville is right that the academic... Uh, faculty lounge rhetoric used by the Democratic elite right now is costing them. No one in America except a bunch of white progressives uses the word Latinx, rhymes with Kleenex. It doesn't exist in Spanish. That word cannot exist in Spanish. And yet white progressives like Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden use the word Latinx. It is the academic uh, faculty lounge woke conversations James Carville's been warning them about. And so the media realizing, oh my gosh, Joe Biden even used Latinx. We got to do something. The media is like, well, let's help them by defining the Republicans uh, by January 6th. So there's a nonstop media hand-wringing. Vice News is, oh, the reporters are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. The reporters are so angry. That tells you everything you need to know about the reporters. The reporters are so angry about January 6th, they're not willing to give Republicans a fair hearing at all. You got the media on television and in the news print attacking Republicans. Even Republicans who uh, condemn January 6th are under attack by the media. This is all about 2022. It's not about the truth of the matter. It's not about the commission. It's not about finding out what happened. We know what happened. This is about winning elections. The media threw in with the Democrats, the partisan press of Washington, D.C., the political press of New York and Washington. They are in league with Democrats right now, doing their best to define Republicans. And by the way, I I say this as someone whose position was January 6th was bad and people do need to go to jail for it. It was not a peaceful gathering, and it sure as hell was not Antifa. It was a bunch of rabid Trump supporters, many of whom were there peacefully, some of whom were there and did bad things, and those people need to go to jail. To define, however, all of Donald Trump's supporters by the acts of a few people in Washington, D.C. is insane. 76 million people voted for Donald Trump. To say that they're all like that is absurd and offensive. The media would never let you get away with that with progressives. In fact, the media is out there watching Antifa and Black Lives Matters burn down cities across America. They say, well, it's fiery, but mostly peaceful. Most of them aren't like this. If you will recall, in 2011, Democrats stormed the Wisconsin state capitol 
Republicans were redistricting, and it was clear they were going to lock in a Republican advantage for a decade. Democratic activists stormed the Wisconsin state capitol to make sure it could not happen, and the media treated those people as heroes. There was no hand-wringing about democracy and a front to democracy. There was no hand-wringing about the destruction of norms. There was no hand-wringing about law-breaking. There was none of that. They were treated as heroes. They were stopping those dastardly Republicans. In Austin, Texas, pro-life members of the Texas legislature intended to pass a pro-life measure a number of years ago an abortion ban. Wendy Davis wore her pink sneakers and abortion Barbie decided to filibuster it. And Democratic activists, some of whom wore coat hanger earrings, stormed the state capitol and tried to prevent the Republicans from meeting. They tried to stop the legislation from passing. In fact, they were able to obstruct it. And Rick Perry, the then governor, had to call a special session of the legislature to come back and get it passed. And the media treated them as heroes. They were engaged in democracy. They were standing up for their rights. They were heroes for shutting down the legislation. One can imagine if Donald Trump got reelected and it was progressive activists who stormed the Capitol as they threatened to do, the American media would declare them heroes. You saw it happen in Austin. You saw it happen in Wisconsin. The Democratic protesters who were trying to stop the lawful convening of legislatures were treated as heroes by the media. It's only the bad guys in Washington. And by the way, I've condemned them all, but the media hasn't. And that's part of the problem here. They're perfectly happy to see Democratic progressive activists burn down America and disrupt legislative proceedings and and make them the heroes. It's only when Republicans behave like the Democrats that the Republicans are bad. It's bad in every way, shape, and form to disrupt the lawful proceedings of a legislature. That's not how our democracy is supposed to work. But the media hasn't had an even hand in it, and now it's very clear they are hyping this stuff up not just because it's the sixth anniversary, but because they need to define the Republicans by it, hoping, thinking, maybe Carville's onto something the voters will reject the GOP. But you know what? The data shows it's not working. 